Hey, if you suffer from knee pain, especially if this is the first time you've ever tweaked your knees, then this video is for you. Because today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through three different steps that are gonna help you reactivate the right muscles and increase your range of motion so that you can restore the function of your knees again, okay? We're gonna go through these steps one at a time, giving you three movements for each step that you can master before moving on to the next one. And these are gonna be foundational steps that allow you to do the next ones that will restore your knees' strength and hopefully take away the pain that you're experiencing right now so you can get back to doing the things you want, like walking around, sitting down, standing up, without experiencing the pain that you're having in your knees right now. So for step number one, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna focus on keeping the quads active. One of the most common things that happens when people injure their knee is their quad starts to turn off. And if we don't keep our quads active, guess what? They shut down and then all of a sudden that causes more knee pain and can cause movement imbalances in our body in the future. The second thing we're gonna do is focus on how to reduce swelling. It's really important to reduce the swelling inside your knee joint and I'll teach you how to do that as well. And finally, I'm gonna show you a simple way that you can improve range of motion. The best part about this step one, you can do all three of these things while lying in bed. So follow me over to the couch and I'll show you exactly how to do this, okay? The first thing we're gonna focus on is keeping the quads active. And one of the best ways to do that is a simple leg extension with just a little bit of a bend to the knee. So when you're lying on your back like this, you can just relax your knees on top of a pillow. From there, you can put your hands on top of your quad muscle that is the knee that's hurting, and you're gonna extend the knee like this, okay? Now, one thing I wanna mention is you're not trying to push the back of your knee into the pillow. You're not pushing the back of the knee into your pillow. What you wanna do is imagine you're trying to increase the length of your heel. Like your heel is going out and forward as much as possible. And the moment you do that, you'll start to feel your quad muscle extend. I want you to hold there for a few seconds. Ideally, you'll start to shake like this. Hold for a few seconds and then slowly relax and let the heel come down. And you're gonna repeat like this for at least 10 repetitions, squeezing and holding for a few seconds until that muscle shakes at the top and then slowly bringing the heel back down. And if you can't feel the quad firing on both sides of the leg, then here's a quick tip for you. If you can't feel the outside firing, turn your toe inward a little bit as you extend the knee and you'll feel this muscle working harder. If you can't feel the inside of your knee, which is probably more common, turn your toe out, your hip out a little bit and extend the leg that way and you'll feel the inside of the quad firing a little bit more. Now, the more you can repeat this movement throughout the day, the more you're gonna keep the mind-muscle connection alive with your quad and the less atrophy you'll have and the better outcome you'll have. So doing this three, four, or five times a day can be really valuable, okay? So that's the first step, is keeping the quads active. Once you feel like you can re-squeeze your quad and relax and come back down a little bit faster and a little bit more efficiently, then that's how you know you're kind of ready to move to the next step but not before you reduce your swelling, okay? So reducing your swelling is really important. If we have a lot of swelling inside the knee joint, what we wanna do is we wanna move the fluid from the knee towards the heart. And one of the best ways to do this is a simple movement called the ankle pump, okay? So how to do the ankle pump is we bring our leg up. You can either do this by holding the back of the knee and keeping the leg straight. You can do this by resting the leg on top of the other foot, or you can even put a strap underneath the heel if you want to. But what we wanna do is we wanna bring our, our knee above our heart and we wanna point the toes, and then bring the toes towards the nose. And we wanna go back and forth like this, creating movement in the lower leg, which usually doesn't exacerbate knee pain, but that movement creates flow of lymph through the leg towards the heart. Because remember, the lymph system, which is where a lot of the swelling comes from, doesn't have its own pump. Its pump is movement, right? So if we stay super still and stagnant, then we get a lot of swelling and we don't move all of that inflammation through the body back towards the heart. So we wanna do this for at least a minute, maybe minute, minute and a half, and we wanna do this again several times a day. And another cool thing you can do to help aid the drainage towards your heart is just grab onto your leg and pull down like this, whether that's you know your leg that's bare and you can get some lotion and pull it down, or you can just grab over your pants and just try to pull the fluids down the leg like this, okay? So you're gonna do the quad sets, right? Keep the quads active, reduce the swelling. The final thing you're gonna do is work on making sure that your range of motion doesn't disappear. Now, it's hard to do range of motion like this when people have knee pain because we're using the quad to make that happen. We want the quad to stay active, but one of the best ways to increase range of motion and reduce knee pain is to flip over on your belly and do this in what's called a prone position and do a hamstring curl instead. So for this one, you're gonna flip over on your belly. You can just rest your head on a pillow, whatever it feels most comfortable to you. And in this position, what we're gonna do is take that same knee and we're gonna curl the heel up towards the butt as much as possible. 
Now, something to think about here is I like to think about pushing my knee as far away from my hip as possible. So instead of my hip being hiked up like this or my butt being up like this, I'm pushing my pelvis down and my knee far away from my body. And I'm thinking about as much length as possible from my heel all the way into my knee. And I'm gonna try to get as much range of motion as I just go back and forth. And again, this can be done for around 60 to 90 seconds. So all in all, this routine takes you probably about five minutes. But if you're laid up because your knee hurts so bad, or you're having so much pain that you're needing to sit down or lie down a lot, the more you do this, the better it's gonna feel and the faster this is gonna heal, all right? Now, if you're able to do all of these movements and your knee starts to feel a little bit better, then you'll know that you're ready to go on to step number two, all right? And for step number two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate the glutes, then we're gonna strengthen the quads, and then we're gonna work on range of motion more, but in a different way, okay? So, activating the glutes is really important because as we move through life, as we stand up, as we go up and down stairs, we wanna not just have the quad active, we also wanna have the glutes active because these are the strongest muscles in the lower body. And if we don't know how to use them, then guess what? That could be why you have knee pain in the first place. But here's what's really cool. Activating the glutes is really simple because all you have to do is start in the same position that we just did the lying leg curl in, like this. You're gonna curl that leg up, and then how do we activate the glutes? We just push our foot towards the sky like this. And once we do that, we hold for a second while we squeeze the butt muscle, and then relax and come back down. And so this is an exercise that's building that mind-muscle connection with the glutes by driving the heel towards the ceiling, and then come back down. And you feel those muscles work really hard. Those are the muscles that we want to feel as we go into the movements that I'm gonna teach you in step number three. We really wanna feel the glutes working in conjunction with the hamstrings and with the quads at the same time. So after you do about 90 seconds of this to activate the glutes, then we can relax. And the next thing we're gonna focus on is strengthening the quads and tibs, but we're gonna do it in a different way. This time, we're gonna bring the legs as high as we feel comfortable, which is usually for most people at this point, you know, maybe about 90 degrees, maybe a little past, maybe a little bit less. But from there, we're gonna lift the toes towards the nose until we feel these shin muscles firing. And then how we're gonna work on activating these quads right now and strengthening them is instead of just doing these little sets like this and squeezing the quad muscles, we're gonna to start to activate them in this position. So we're gonna lift the toes to the nose, then drive the heels into the ground until you feel like you're almost about to lift your hips up and you'll start to feel your quads activate. Really squeeze the quad muscles, let them shake and hold this position. Really trying to get that muscle to work. And this one we can hold for anywhere between 30 seconds, 60 seconds, all the way up to 90 seconds until you feel that muscle start to shake and fatigue. So we're going from just a few second holds where we're really focusing on that full extension to really focusing on activating the quad in a more bent knee position, which is harder to do and holding for a longer period of time. Okay, so once we practice this one, after you've done strengthening the quads, then we wanna focus on more range of motion, which again, we can do right here. And this one's really simple, it's a heel slide. So once we've done the quads, we're gonna just let the heels slide down the couch until we extend our legs. And then we're gonna curl our heels towards our butt and bring our knees towards our chest until we reach as much range of motion as we can get. And then we're gonna reverse the motion, going back and forth. And ideally, this would be about 10 repetitions. And it's okay if there's a little bit of friction and resistance from your heels into the couch or your heels into the bed. That friction and resistance creates strength as you're creating range of motion, as you go back and forth, okay? So once you feel like you've mastered step number two, you've activated your glutes, you can feel your glutes working, right? You're able to really lift the toes, the nose, and squeeze the quads in this position, in a more bent knee position, and you're starting to see improvements in your range of motion. Maybe you're getting to 90 degrees or more there. Let's move on to step number three, where we can start to help you get back to doing the things you wanna do for your daily life, okay? So step number three, three different things. We're gonna work on what's called eccentric strength and stability. It's a fantastic way to work yourself back into being able to do things in daily life. And then proper knee alignment. This is really important. This could be the reason why you hurt your knee in the first place. And finally, we're gonna keep working on range of motion, okay? Now this one's a little different. We're gonna work on all three of these in just one movement. And the movement I'm gonna teach you and focus on is a movement called the sit to stand. And how we're gonna practice this and how we're gonna increase range of motion is we're gonna start by putting some pillows behind us. So grab a pillow or two, come to the edge of the chair or a couch, somewhere where you're gonna practice this movement, somewhere safe where if you fall backwards, you're gonna land nice and safe, okay? Now, these pillows right here are my marker to tell me how low to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by turning my toes out and making sure that my knees are pointing the same directions as my toes as I start to descend down. So another reason why people get that knee pain is they go down and their knees are pointed in like this and their toes are pointed out. 
So oftentimes that involves you having to drive your knees out and externally rotate your hips in order to be able to do this properly. So right there, push your knees out, push the weight back on your heels, and now we're gonna feel those glutes, right? Push the butt back. Instead of bringing the knees forward as we go down, push the butt back. Now slowly bend the knees while continuing to push the butt back until you feel your butt touch the pillow behind you and then reverse the motion. We wanna do these slow and controlled, really slow and controlled, making sure we're doing them with perfect form and that we're feeling all of the muscles that we practice activating working, like our quads, our hamstrings, and our glutes all at the same time. And again, making sure those knees are going the same direction as the toes. Now, if I can do at least 10 of these really slow and controlled and it feels good, then how do I make progression? I increase range of motion by getting rid of one of the pillows, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same exact movement. I'm gonna stick my butt back. I'm gonna come down until I feel that pillow, and then I'm gonna stand back up. Now, if you don't have, you know, if you have like some really thick pillows and it's really hard for you to do this, then what you can do is you can put your hands on your knees at first and use your arms for support. And then eventually don't use your arms for support while still maintaining that range of motion, but don't graduate and get rid of this pillow and go to the next range of motion until you're able to do at least 10 of these with perfect form, slow and controlled, and your knees still feeling good. So no pain while you're doing this. If you're able to do that 10, then guess what? You get rid of that, and now we start working on coming all the way down into a chair, sitting down, and reversing the motion, and standing back up. This is probably the most foundational movement that we should all be able to maintain, because it's something that we do naturally in our daily life, and it's so important for us to be able to do this so that we can actually do the things that we want to do with our body. So, if you've had knee pain, and you don't know what to do with it, try these three steps out. Give them a shot, be patient and slow with them, and let us know in the comments, how did these make your knee feel? Did they make your knee feel better? Did they get you out of pain? And did they get you back to doing the things you wanna do with your body again? Because remember, when you learn to move your body better like we just did there, you feel better in your body. Hey, if you like the way we teach you how to recover from things like aches, pains, and injuries, then you're gonna love the workouts that we create over at WeShape. And I know when I say the word workout, probably thinking to yourself, I can't work out, I'm in too much pain right now. But that's why we created these We Shape workouts in the first place. A lot of the movements that you just learned are actually in these workouts to help people like you recover from things like knee pain, ankle pain, hip pain, back pain, shoulder pain, elbow pain, etc. And so many of our members report feeling so much more amazing in their body, getting strength, flexibility, balance, and coordination in such quick amount of time. Plus, the best part is you can try a We Shape workout plan for free for two whole weeks. So, if you want us to build you a personalized workout plan, all you got to do is take our free quiz by clicking the link below.